Season 46, War Number 12, the final war of the season, and we are up against Nefty. This time he will be Lady D, Valkyrie and Kate Bishop, and I will be taking Path 1 in Section 1, Path 6 in Section 2, Photon, Sauron, Wong, Maestro and Joe Fixit mini-bosses, as well as the Titania boss. Now, the Titania boss wasn't assigned to me to begin with, but due to some complications, I guess, I had to be the one to take it instead, but more on that once we actually get there. Now, starting off this war, we have an Absorbing Man here on the Personal Space Regeneration node, and I will be taking this fight with Kate Bishop. Now, starting off here, I went ahead and put on the Cryo Arrow pre-fight, but it didn't stick, so I, I had to reload the war map just to make sure it is actually there, so I wouldn't have any issues with the arrow swapping on me automatically in the middle of the fight. Now, the fight itself is quite simple to take. I'm just gonna be dropping a couple special ones and letting the code snap passives do the work. As long as I don't push up Sorry Matt with a special 2, he will have nothing to counter the cold snap damage, and even if he does get a couple regen buffs here and there from the node, they aren't gonna be able to save him. The damage from the cold snaps is just too much for him to handle, and so long as he doesn't get too many of the regens, the fight is quite simple, and there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Now, had he stacked too many of them, all I would need to do is just use the parry evade for the passive stun, then step away, let the stun expire naturally, and just stay away long enough for the regions to fall off. And already, here on the next fight, we have a Jessica Jones on the Masochism Overtime and Vigorous Assault nodes, and I am taking the fight with Valkyrie. Now, as long as I don't parry here, there will be no debuffs for me to inflict, which means that the Masochism node will never trigger, meaning this Jessica Jones will not go unblockable either, and there is absolutely nothing for me to worry about here. Now, I will be building up both the Pierce and the Bulwark buffs, just hitting Jessica Jones here until she drops, and that's just about all there is to this fight. The pierces allow me to completely bypass the opponent's unstoppable effects, so even though Jessica Jones is already ramped up here, it doesn't matter, I can hit her just fine, and this fight is essentially over by this point. He hits into the block, and down she goes, fight took less than a minute, and I gotta say, I do miss using Valkyrie in war. She is pretty fun to use, and she is powerful as well. The recent AI changes have made her a little bit less useful, which is annoying to say the least, but she is still a very capable champion, and very powerful at that. Now, real quick there, I did change my masteries. I put on the recoil masteries here for a couple Lady D fights I have, and this fight right here is a Nick Fury on the Prowess buildup unblockable and Superior Special Snowed. And I could have taken this fight with Kate Bishop, but I chose to use Lady D instead. Mainly for the fact that if I happen to eat a special by accident here, she would have that regeneration to potentially save me. Now, talking about Lady D's regeneration, it regens back 90% of the hit damage you take from the opponent's specials, and that region is increased by 20% flat if she is suffering from either bleed or poison. So having the recoil master is active here means that if I were to eat any special hits, I will actually heal back more damage than I take from them, making her a very safe option for plenty of matchups. And though here I realized that Disorient could in fact shut down the region, which made this fight a little bit scarier. Now at this point Nick Fury is in his second life, I didn't manage to actually skip it with the healbox debuff, which is unfortunate, but one thing to note here is that the 200% prowess from the superior specials node was removed when he entered his second life as well, so even though he has his Furies here, the specials are not gonna hit as hard as they could be hitting few more hits and he is gonna go down. I did take some damage here due to a couple mistakes of my own, but nothing too bad. 
overall I probably would have been better off using Kate Bishop there, but it worked out, so no complaints here. Now next up we have a Bullseye, the new and scary defender here, on the prowess build-up unblockable and passively special nodes, and I will be taking the fight with Lady D. Now in, on this node you cannot block a Bullseye specials, because every single special hit that you block gives him prowess from the passively special node, making those specials even more dangerous than they already are. However, after some brainstorming while planning for this war, I figured that Lady D should be basically the perfect counter here. Instead of having to block or try to dex the specials, I'll just eat them and heal back all the damage that I would take from them. Now, I do have the recoil masteries on for this one, since I thought they would be necessary to heal back more than I take from the specials, but apparently they instant release the trigger on the special hits, count for Lady D's increased regeneration on the special hits, so you can do this even without the recoil masteries, you will still keep healing more than you take. And that basically means, as long as you don't eat actual combo hits here, Lady D just can't die. Just bait the special one over and over again, and eat it. Repeat until Bullseye eventually drops. And that is exactly what I'm gonna be doing here. I did make a few mistakes at the start of the fight, eating some hits due to a missed dashback, but that's quite alright. I only dropped to around 70%, and at this point I kinda have the rotation down. Now one thing that I was supposed to do here, but I forgot about, was putting on Coagulate, or however, you, however you're supposed to say the Master's name, that reduces the incoming bleed potency for your champions. That would allow Lady D to be 100% resistant to this bleed, so the instant bleeds on basic hits and specials wouldn't do anything at all, and it would just make the fight that much safer. That said, as we can see here, it's not needed. I'm still reaching more from the specials that I'm taking, and yeah, it's just gonna be this over and over again. Bait the special one, eat it, hit him a few times, bait the special one, eat it, and repeat. Overall, I gotta say, I am pretty happy that I actually thought of this on the first war that Bullseye was available as a defender, and I'd say the result was pretty good. Now, just to mention here, Lady D is an excellent counter for Bullseye, but at the same time, she is still pretty slow. So for something like Beaches, she will work, but you're not gonna be getting any 50k scores or anything, so just keep that in mind. And then, right there, I did change my recoil masteries off, since the next fight that I am taking will be that Photon miniboss, and I am taking it with Lady D. And while having recoil on for Lady D is usually fine, Photon completely removes the opponent's willpower mastery, so the poison would slowly but surely tick me down throughout the fight, and I didn't want to deal with that. And so, just to reiterate here, this matchup is a Photon on the personal space regeneration and enhanced recovery miniboss node, and I am taking it with Lady D. Now this matchup was very scary, and I wasn't really sure about if I should take this fight or not, but we didn't really have a better option at hand, so Lady D it is. Essentially the game plan here is to just make sure the heal block debuff stays on the opponent at all times to shut down the regen, because if that heal block debuff, heal block debuff falls off, she will shoot up with her health right back to full health in no time. The enhanced recovery node here is making the region very potent, so keeping it blocked is a must. Essentially I need to be hyper aggressive, landing those second mediums whenever the heal block is even close to falling off, just keep it off or keep it on at all times while also managing photo or zone abilities and all of that combined that's that's a rough fight, I gotta say. I was not happy about needing to take this one, but we didn't really have a choice. Now at this point I needed to trigger the pure light form here, and luckily 
I am able to use the light with here to keep her back whenever she dashes back. And since I will not be standing close to her when I do that, she will not be stacking up any of those regeneration buffs either. And that is kind of what allows me to play around the node during those rough times. Now at this point I have to fight, or rather the rotation down pretty well here. So as long as I can keep doing what I have been doing, I should be good. Now the heal block diva fell off here due to the AI being a little bit passive, but luckily having a couple ruptures on allowed me to block out most of the healing with despair. Now if she had had multiple regions, that might have been a different story, but luckily I did manage to get the heal block back on ASAP. Now I did manage to get the fight down in around 2 minutes, which was actually better than I thought it would be, so I am pretty happy with the result. Now one thing I want to mention here was that sometimes I was placing ruptures on Photon without actually hitting her, and that is due to Lady D's sig ability. If you block the opponent's healing, enough of it at least, you will inflict ruptures and due to that, so due to all of the regenerations she had and all the healing I was blocking, I was able to actually use the sig ability to my advantage and trigger more ruptures as I went on, which did help me shut down the region at times with the despair mastery as well. So the do ability does help, but even then it is not necessary, even for a fight like that. Now here we have yet another Sauron on the high energy diet and burden of might miniboss node, and as you can see I am taking the fight with Lady D. And I didn't bother pausing there after the photon fight to talk about the rest of it, simply because we've all seen this matchup already, we don't care about it anymore, so there's not much else for me to say about it. All I gotta do is just keep the heal block debuff up, the taunt as well if possible, but mainly just the heal block debuff and I'm good to go. Avoid the specials, hit the opponent, heal block up, repeat as long as necessary and that's all there is to it. And with that I will just let this fight play out since I really have nothing else to say about it. Another Sauron down, no issues there, and at this point he's probably an endangered species simply due to my Lady D alone, but at the very least I will not have to see him again for the rest of this season. That said, next season I'm sure I can find him right on the same node every single time once again. Anyways, next up here we have a Wong on the Hazard Shift Incinerate and Poison and Stun Immunity miniboss node and I will be taking this fight with Valkyrie. And it has been a while since I've been taking these Hazard Shift fights with Valk and the game plan is still the same as usual. I'm just gonna be hitting the block to gain power to my special 2 as well as to ramp up the pierce buffs here. Now due to the recent AI changes you can't do the non-contact combo inversion anymore, which is the four light attacks whiffed in the air to revert your combo without touching the opponent. So I will be lacking on some damage here, but that's fine. The main thing I need is the ability to counter the unstoppable with those pierces. I did use an advanced power boost here just in case. I did not want to deal with any of these unstoppables early on before I got my first pierce buff, so it was just a safety net here and also to help me get to that special 2 faster as long as everything started out well enough. Now at this point I have my pierces up, all I gotta do is just keep at it, keep hitting the block and that is all there really is to it. Now the uh, energy or whatever it's called on Wong there, below his health bar. But once that is above 90, you are supposed to hit him with a heavy attack, or otherwise you're gonna be taking a big burst of damage. However, if you don't hit him directly at all, that damage never triggers, so he can sit at 100 energy here, 
for the rest of the fight, and as long as I don't land a direct hit, nothing will happen. So Valkyrie is a decent counter here. Now one thing I need to keep an eye on is that I don't hold my block basically at all at any point here, because every time I do so, Wong with his trigger happy heavy attacks will very likely charge up their heavy attack, going unstoppable, and gaining a ton of power. The unstoppable itself is fine since we can deal with it using the pierces, but the power gain can be a problem if it happens at the wrong time. That said, this one was very nice to me, and the fight only took around 2 minutes, absolutely no problems here, and Valkyrie just destroyed it as usual. As much as I like playing Valkyrie, I'm still very sad that a couple of the AI manipulation tricks don't work anymore. I can understand why they were removed, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but at the same time, it is understandable that they were, especially the four light weaves, that was quite literally breaking the AI. Now, here we have a Maestro on the power efficiency and missing in action miniboss node, and I'm taking this fight with Kate Bishop. As usual, I start with the Cryo Arrow pre-fight, and then use an advanced power boost to get my first special one off very early on into the fight. It's been roughly 15 seconds when I got my second Cold Snap up as well, and now all I gotta do is just keep them up by punishing specials and heavy attacks, landing knockdowns with my heavy attack in the corner to refresh them, and now just keep baiting and punishing his specials to keep them paused, and yeah, the fight is basically over at this point. I could just back off, the Cold Snaps would do enough damage to close it out, and the fight is over with no damage taken, and very, very quickly as well. I could barely get an explanation in before it was over, and that's just how powerful Kate Bishop is, and how good she actually is against Maestro specifically. And then we have what should have been my final fight of the whole season, a Joe Fixit on the Stunning Reflection, Polkadot Power and Brute Force Miniboss Node, and I am taking the fight with Lady D. I went ahead and put on the Recoil Master East to help out with my damage output, as well as to give me the option to eat a special and survive it if necessary. Kinda like that bullseye fight, since this guy's special one can be absolutely lethal with those dauntlets. So now, since I have a constant poison on me, I will be healing more than I actually take from the specials, and well, once again I did forget about the coagulate here, so I would still take the bleed damage, though only 10% of it. And that said, my game plan is to not rely on that, I'm just gonna be baiting special 2s here, or at least trying to, and then slowly but surely taking this guy down. Now the damage increase from the recoil masteries is great for the actual hit and special damage, but it does not help with the ruptures. Lady D's ruptures only scale off her armor rating, so the attack increase does absolutely nothing here. Now, usually you don't wanna block anything with Lady D, because you will lose your ferocity that way, but I would rather lose out on some of my damage by losing the ferocity, just to push this guy to the special 2, since the special 1 really is deadly if it hits. Now that said, this guy has been very very nice with his specials, he's not throwing them randomly into my block, and he is actually nice enough to be aggressive, so I won't be taking any of the brute force damage like I did in the previous war with Werewolf by Night. Now all that said, this fight has gone pretty much perfectly, I have taken some chip damage but that's quite alright, I am healing back a lot of health from those debuffs, thanks to the willpower mastery and the fact that Lady D's regeneration rate cannot be modified, so the petrify and the despair mastery will do nothing to her willpower healing or any other type of regen she might have. And now we have the actual final fight of this season, a Titania boss that I'm taking with Kate Bishop. And Kate Bishop is not a tactic attacker, meaning she has absolutely no protection against the unblockable rooted special attacks from this Titania. 
So, what I did was a ton of duels beforehand to make sure I have the special one next down, so I could get it down in my sleep. And the next is quite simple to do, to be quite honest. Now, the original plan for this boss was a fully ramped up Hercules, but our Hercules player was basically itemed out at this point, so they couldn't heal up for the boss, and I was the next best option we had available. Now, Kate Bishop is a great counter for Titania in general, but simply due to the fact that I have no protection here against the specials, made this fight very, very scary for me to take a single Mist Dex on the special one, and if it crits, I'm dead, and there's nothing I can say about it. Though that said, so far the fight has gone absolutely perfectly. But I do one fail mistake here in just a moment. I made a slight miscalculation with her power meter, and I dropped my special 2, pushing her to her special 2. And yeah, that special 2, if it had caught me, I would have died immediately. I had 6 dauntlets on me, she was unblockable, that special 2 hits like a truck, and I just went for the dex. I had not practiced it at all, I didn't know how to dex it, I just went for it and it worked out, and yeah, I did get the solo. No death for me for the final fight of the season, so I am very happy with that. But my god, was my heart in my throat while that happened. I don't know why or how I miscalculated it so badly. It was obvious that the special 2 would push her to her special 2, but I did it anyway, and thankfully I did not drop another death. As for the results, we did end up winning this war 66 to 3. We ended the season with a bang and we landed a top 10 master spot. So overall, even though we had some horrible wars, we still finished in the top 10, so I am happy with that. As for my personal stats this season, I ended up with 98 attacker kills, including 10 boss kills, and I died a total of 6 times which is just horrible. It's my all-time worst season that I can remember in all of my time playing MCOC, but at this point there's nothing I can really say about it. I can just move on, forget about it, and maybe do better next time. As for the season rewards, I didn't bother recording any openings, simply due to the fact that I didn't open anything interesting. I am saving the Titan Shards for the Titan Pool update, so I will be opening two of those crystals once that comes around, but other than that, that is it from me for this season. And with that, next season New Nation is taking a break, but I will still be recording my fights, I will be putting out war videos as usual, the only difference is that I will not be fully boosted for my fights, and I might be trying something different, we will see once we get there.